Okay, I'm going to talk about here how to get better fuel mileage, especially in a truck, but this applies to cars too. Okay. I'll go ahead and unpause this. I'm doing right at 55, and it's fairly heavy traffic. This truck here has what's called a retarder in the transmission. And a lot of the vehicles nowadays have so much in electronics that assist our driving, but it's not necessarily good for us in terms of fuel mileage or in other ways. You know, um, I'm going to try and turn some of this stuff off. Yeah. Okay. So, the speed limit here is 55. Do you see... Best way in heavy traffic, do you see that, that little beep, that little sound right now? That's my retarder kicking in, and I'm going to let it because, oh my goodness. I didn't hit the guy. I mean, he could have stopped anyway. Uh, oh my goodness. This is really ridiculous. You got to really study your traffic up ahead. Of course, that wasn't the best example of good driving. Okay, and I really don't want to... When those guys start hitting the brakes, watch out. Now, the retarder is nice, because it allows me to kick down the cruise control, and it'll slow me down. But, again, it's at the expense of fuel. And some people might wonder how slowing down costs fuel. So let me explain this to you. An engine pulls the car or pushes the car down the road. All that consumes fuel. When I use brakes, or in this case a retarder to slow me down, I've wasted the fuel that it took to build up to that speed. I'm speeding now. So, it's better for me, for instance, uh, I'm speeding, I'm doing 60 instead of 55. Now, if I let go of the cruise control, if I notch the cruise control down by 5 miles an hour, and I'm going to give you a quick example, if you look at the dashboard, you'll see that little orange light, and you'll see that little beep thing. And that kicks me down to 55 pretty quickly, but... That retarder just cost me some fuel, because now if I have to come back up to 60, so what I'm going to do next, instead of doing it that way, is I'm just going to tap the brake pedal, and that disengages my cruise control. Now do you see how it's not slowing down as quickly? That is better for my fuel mileage. And then I just activated the cruise control right at 55. Yeah, I'm just double checking it with my uh, dashboard here. Okay. I mean, it is about doing the speed limit, you know. Now, I don't really have a good example, but, but the distance from my truck to the car in front of me is very nice really want that, because it takes a long time to slow these vehicles down, you know, a retarder is nice too, but you know, a lot of times too, what'll happen, especially going up a mountain, and it'll happen in cars too, when the mountain is so steep that the cruise control is set to 55, let's say, and but the mountain is so steep that it gets me going down to 50 and then 45, and I'm using 5 mile an hour increments because that's how this cruise control works. That's actually adjustable too. Okay, now you see the traffic getting heavier, so... Fortunately, it's still moving faster than I am. See, these guys pulling in front of me and then hitting their brakes? That crap happens in real life, too, and I really don't understand it. You know, screw you. 
Like, what do they think? I didn't see him pull, cut me off. You know. But there ain't nothing you can do. They, they do that crap all day long. You know. And then this here is artificial intelligence, which I would expect is no more or less responsive than, than the human mind. And they, they just don't understand. Yeah, this guy too. Now, they do it here more than they do in the real world. Okay, here's a little up slope. Okay, and it's probably going to cost me some speed. No. No, it's, it's managing. But what will happen is it will cost me some speed going up slope. And let's say it gets me all the way down to four. And I've even downshifted a few gears and all that. And I'm doing 40 miles an hour. I get to the top of the mountain. Please don't pull out. Thank you. And, uh, and it pulls me over the top. Here's a good example. It pulls me over the top and pushes me to fit back to 55 while I'm already going downhill. See, this truck right now, the cruise control is disengaged. It's actually going over 55. Okay? But I, I, I disconnected the cruise control just before I crested the, the hill. I hope this is making some kind of sense. Uh, here's another one. I'm coming up this hill. I watch my speedometer. I really don't know if I can do this. Yeah, see, see I'm losing speed now. Down at the bottom, and I'm going to tap the cruise control now. Although this wasn't the perfect example either. But right now, it's going to let me speed up again on its own. Yeah, that was kind of a small hill. I was hoping for a bigger downhill. Because a lot of times, you can get back up to going the speed limit. And you see that road work ahead getting ready to slow down again. Oh my god. And I've got to get in this lane here. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. And they don't care. They'll cut you off. So a lot of advanced planning keeps me from having to step on the brakes as much. You know, the less I'm on the gas, the less I allow the vehicle to coast down, the better my fuel mileage. And, uh, you know, a couple of tenths of a mile. We're talking a truck here that's getting... Great. Now I'm definitely going to let the retarder do some work here. I got to pull into the way station. And I use Jake brake as well. Now that doesn't necessarily help me in terms of fuel mileage, but uh, it's a lot easier going than the air brake. So you probably do know this if you drive truck a lot. Every time you use the air brakes, you lose air pressure. I'm not going to get into that discussion right now. I'm sorry, I don't want to talk and think at the same time. I'll get through this place here. Looks like a traffic jam, too. Now, I'm just basically coasting to a stop. Almost. Not quite. Oh, jeepers. Holy cow. Let's see, traffic jams are a real good example on where and how to save fuel. I don't know if I'm ever be able to get out into this traffic here. Oh uh, yeah, I'm 
as well, don't rely on all your electronics to, to give you to, to keep your speed even. Rather, you should use your foot on the accelerator and lighten up on it ahead of knowing when you gotta stop. Stop anticipation. Now, I can sum this all up into a couple of words. Three words. What I was going to get at a minute ago, and I'm going to go ahead and explain it now. Um, you know, somebody will be behind me, and I need to change lanes. So to put on my turn signal, and they jump out into the lane I'm getting ready to get into. Like they think the turn signal is me telling them to change lanes. That is not what it means. When a truck of any kind, any, when the vehicle in front of you has a turn signal on, and there's no, there's no actual turn there. Yeah, they're gonna change direction, you know. It's not for you, it's for them. For, I mean, <laughs> it's just unbelievable, these, these, these people, what they must be thinking, you know. I'll have a car behind me and I gotta, I'm in the left-hand lane and I gotta get in the right-hand lane or something. So, you know, um, So I put on my right hand turn signal, and before I get a chance, because I'm still kind of studying my mirrors, before I, I get a chance to head over, the car just darts out right into the next lane and, uh, and blocks me. Or better yet, they sit right there with about a foot to spare, and like flashing their lights for me to move over. I'm like, you know, if you're back there, and I'm looking in my rear view to see if you're, uh, I mean, I don't know if I've got the clearance or not from my rear view mirror, man. 
So, you know, if a truck puts on a turn signal, that means they're probably going to change direction. And if it takes them a little longer to do so, it's probably because uh, it's a big vehicle. Now, I'm going to show you a little. See, see, hopefully I don't have to do any super fancy parking here. Because the problem I found out is I'm driving a long chassis. And these are some long trailers, too. And these guys want me to park this stuff. It's like I'm pulling in forward and then they're going to want me to back it in somewhere. Watch this. That's not too bad. I'm going to move up in here. Come over here. Pull up here. And then try and back it up. It's still going to be plenty, plenty trick. But that's what I'm going to do. Anyhow, that, uh, today's lesson is over. This, this is just a little bit of... Uh, Watching me struggle back in this thing up. Maybe I get to cussing again. It's a real trick, you know. You, th you can't really pull up too close to anything because then you can't turn. But yet, yeah, you gotta get kind of close so that you can get the trailer to angle correctly. <laughs> really didn't want to do that. Alright. It does pay. Now, the way I've got this, you see my mirror there? Gosh, it's awful bright. I turned the beacon off. And the lights as well. And there's a little window back behind the passenger side seat, so I'm going to be studying that window this mirror simultaneously. Crap. And I turn my wheel this way and start backing up. More than anything, I'm going to study. No, I just don't remember. Okay, so I've got to get on that side of the red truck. Oh, jeez. I'm going to say that's... This side. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's seriously tricky. Son of a gun. Okay. Okay. That's gonna work out. It's just amazing. I got my wheel fully turned. I just, it does allow some room for error. It's not that bad, but still. I got I'm actually getting kind of good at this. Oh boy, maybe I shouldn't have spoke so soon. I hope it lets me get away with that. Yeah, dang, that actually, that was sweet. <laughs> okay. That concludes today's video. Thank you for watching. Well, I'll let you see this. Yeah, it, it did pretty nice.